Tonight I've got two fantastic guests. I've got the MP for Wickford and Rayleigh, the legendary Right Honourable Mark Francois, and a political legend, our left in the corner, is Sir Vince Cable, ex-leader of the Liberal Democrats. Really delighted to have you here tonight, Vince. But I'm going to get straight into it, Mark. Mm. Now, over the past week, we've had the Illegal Migration Bill in Parliament. And one of the things that used to frustrate me before I was elected, I used to sit there shouting the scream at you lot on the green benches, not passing laws, dilly-dallying, but once you get there, you get to see what actually happens. And mm. the Lords, I think, have been a little bit mischievous over the past two weeks. I think on one night last week, we had to vote 18 times to mm -hmm. uh, kick down their amendments. Mark, how frustrating... Is, you've been there a lot, lot longer than me. How frustrating is it? It, it is pretty frustrating. I mean, look, the Lords have a different role in our Constitution. They are not elected, and I'm not saying that they should be, but they don't have constituents in the way that we do. So, Mark, we have select committees that can make recommendations and scrutinise. We have bill committees. There's lots of layers of, of democracy, if you like, within Parliament where, mm -hmm. where legislation can be scrutinised. Do you think the Lords needs reforming, or do you think yeah, there is a place for the Lords, but we need to... Tone it down a little bit. Well, well, the Lords have committees of their own, yeah. so they have some quite complex structures in their House. I'm not saying that members of the House of Lords aren't entitled to their opinion. We live in a democracy, right? Yeah. We're not in Putin's Russia. I just think sometimes they should take a little more effort to try and take account of public opinion yeah. in the debates that they have. I I'm choosing my words carefully yeah. here. But, you know, at the end of the day, we are elected. We have a democratic mandate. The Lords are not elected. Yeah. And so, in the end of the day, the will of the elected House must prevail. So, Vince, uh, Mark suggested, and I, I tend to agree with Mark, actually, that the, uh, as MPs, we take our direction, not only from our party, but from the electorate, people that email in and contact us. It seems that the Lords don't do that. Well, I, I saw this as a backbencher with the Labour government and a Tory government and a cabinet minister. And, yeah, I mean, it can be frustrating, but the, 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 you know that as a member of a government that the Lords are going to cave in anyway. Yeah. They have this so-called ping-pong. So, it, so it's irritating, you're going to keep voting, but actually they always cave in. So it's not a major issue for the governing party. But there is a bigger question about what the Lords are actually there for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I personally would get rid of it in its current form. It's been rather discredited by a lot of the appointments in recent years. So I'd either have it elected or I'd have it drawn by a lot, a kind of citizen jury or something like that. So the ordinary members of the public can express their view through a, a kind of citizen's jury type setup. So that's another way of doing it. So I think having a, a second chamber that will have a, a, you know, a look at legislation, pick up things that are wrong. I mean, you can have bill committees, but of course all they do is make recommendations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting it into law is a, is a different matter. So having a second check does no harm, providing at the end of the day, the elected chamber gets its way. Now, Mark, I'm going to move on a little bit now to, um Public nuisances, protests, the Public Order Act. We have a, a chap outside Parliament, and I know you've had a few run-ins with this stop Brexit, Steve, and I know he was probably loitering around when, when, back in the day when, when Vince was in Parliament. This is a man who I think has gone too far. He, he, he tends to hang around on, on Whitehall. He harasses Tory MPs on a regular basis. Yeah, yep. and you've, you've, you've faced the... The, the brunt of it on, on several occasions. We're talking about Steve Braid's uh, the Stop Brexit, Steve. I think what we're going to do is actually just watch a clip from where he accosted me yesterday on Whitehall. And you are liars, cheats, charlatans and fraudsters, What's that? Mr Anderson. What is that? That's Sylvia. Right, oh. you got a problem with Sylvia? Yeah, no. Do you want to beat her up? No. Oh, no. good, good. Nice you want to beat everyone else, nice sir? Anyway, uh, what's this about your second job with GB News? I won't take a second job. Here you go, I'll take a first job. <laughs> so, Mark, you saw the clip. You saw him in action. It's not the first time. What should we do with this man? Well, look, on the one hand, we don't want to live in Putin's Russia. We believe in, you know, the right to democratic protest. Yeah. But this goes way beyond that. You know, this is a man who, you know, pursues people down the road. He's extremely rude. He thrusts a camera in their face. He's, you know, he's trying to get a rise out of you, isn't he? That's what he... Because he thinks that that would make, you know, for a good video clip. I mean, you are more than a match for him. I mean, your answer yesterday to him about, you know, 
second jobs. Well, you haven't even got a first one. I thought was great. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so I'm, normally you win these contests hands down. But the question is, should he be doing it in the first place? A- 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 and I think he crosses a line between democratic protest on the one hand yeah. and uh, intimidation and harassment on another. And uh, on a light-hearted note, uh, I understand you've tried to get him on the show in the past. Yeah. Well, if, if he ever has the nerve to take you up on it, let me know and I'll come into the studio and stand behind him with a megaphone and shout all over him and see whether he likes it. I'll give him a bit of his own medicine. Vince, you were in Parliament at the, uh, the height of the Brexit debate and you obviously must have come across this, this character outside Parliament back in the day when he was, you know, actually peacefully protesting, but, you know, as the years have gone on, he seems to become more of a, of a public nuisance, a, a tourist attraction, and he's, quite frankly, he's just getting on people's nerves. Well, I, I don't buy that, actually. I mean, I got shouted at by both sides in the Brexit okay. debate. People got very emotional... Um, and I encountered this, this guy. But I think that there, there is, as Mark conceded, you know, there is a basic freedom of speech issue. Mm. I mean, I'm at the moment strongly defending Nigel Farage's right to say what he wants to yep. say without losing his bank account. Uh, you know, and this guy is another aspect of freedom of speech. Uh, if he'd be locked up, if it was in Russia or Iran. But, you know, we're not that kind of country. And it is annoying, but, you know, I've been a government minister for mm. five years doing unpopular things, and you get people yeah. harassing you in the street, you get cameras pushed in front of your face. I mean, that, it, it, you know, as a politician, you've got to develop a thick skin. That's politics. It's rough politics. You know, it, it, it'd be nice if we were all polite and listened, and that's the way politics... But you made an interesting point earlier, uh, Vince, about Nigel Farage mm. and the bank accounts. I want to talk about that very, very briefly, Mark. I think it's shocking. I think it's a slippery slope. Um, I think, you know, I said on, on GB News it was a form of communism. And when I say that, I mean it's about control. It's about telling people what they can and can't do. I think it's absolutely despicable. Well, look, in, in, in modern life, you know, you, you tap increasingly for everything, everywhere you go. You can't function without a bank account, yeah. right? So cancelling someone's bank account sort of freezes their life. It looks like this was, in effect, a political decision, yeah, yeah. right? And if we talk about freedom of speech, I think one thing we could all agree on is, is that no one should take away your bank account because you happen to have an opinion. You know, banks are not there as moral arbiters. They're there to provide a service. And, you know, where would this stop? You know, so if anyone says anything controversial about any sort of issue, is some functionary sitting in a bank who holds the different view going to see that on television, flip up their laptop and go, there's your bank account gone, chum. We can't live in a society like that. That is heading towards communist China, isn't it? Vince? Well, I do agree with that, actually. Um, I think the bank have behaved very badly, and that's come out. The word that kept cropping up was Russia, and the bank are obviously terrified of crossing some line where Russian sanctions are concerned and Nigel's apparent alleged partiality to Putin is what, what's caused this problem. But, but Mark's right, and I think we do agree about this. Fundamental right to freedom of speech. Uh, I can happily debate with Nigel Farage. There's no reason yeah. why... Well, I mean, look, hang on, for, for the record, you know, f- uh, you know, Nigel Farage is not a Putin sympathiser and he's on the record time and again opposing the war in Ukraine. But even if he had a different opinion, even if he'd said, I take the Russian side in the argument, which he doesn't, that still wouldn't be a reason for cancelling his bank account. Let, let me let Vince have the last word yeah. on this, Mark, because... Um, Economic expert, obviously, Vince. Been in the game a long time. All banks squeaky clean. I mean, they were bailed out by the taxpayer a decade ago. You know, we're still paying the price for it. Yeah. A lot of our economic problems go back to that time. So, you know, this should be really... You know, this, this Farage issue is nasty, but it's a distraction. The big issue is that they're not really helping consumers, the economy, and the way they should. That's been an interesting conversation. <laughs>